The Rio Grande wild turkey is a popular game bird in the southern Great Plains. And even though it's hunted a lot, not a lot of landowners actively manage for it. And that's unfortunate because it's a species that you can definitely increase on your property and make your hunting a little more successful. So we're in um, western part of the Rio Grande's range here in Oklahoma. And Tanner, why don't you tell us a little bit about what we're going to be doing over the next year or two. So we're here on a particular piece of property in western Oklahoma uh, with a landowner who's been gracious enough to allow us on uh, his place to document and track his habitat journey. So uh, what exactly are you uh, wanting to get out of managing for this place and uh, kind of what are your goals long term? So Tanner, the, the the, what I'm trying to get out of the management is a balance between agriculture and wildlife. The value of the wildlife just increases as we take care of it. And uh, we found on this ranch by reducing the stocking rate a little bit, working together, that they, the wildlife and the, and the uh, grazing go together really well. We have a, a eastern red cedar problem, as do most of this region of the country. <laughs> so that's, that's you know, really been goal number one. And I think when, uh, just from hunting out here and from, uh, and from the ranching perspective, we find that the cattle and the wildlife work together very well if we maintain that balance and the value of both come up. Well, we really appreciate the opportunity to work with you on this and it'll be fun to kind of document the change. And you know, this ranch already is pretty good for wild turkey, but there's some things that we can do to make it better that'll hopefully help you and also help the viewers. So Tanner, now we're standing on a two-track road, uh, which may be hard to tell because it's kind of become brush encroached. And often in western Oklahoma, west Kansas, and Texas Panhandle, we might not think about areas getting too thick, but, but they can, especially in areas that turkeys spend a lot of time in. And this is a really important spot because we have known roosting areas and known foraging areas, and they use this road to go between but because of this dense brush that's right up against the road, it does present a, a predation risk. So what are you thinking about doing here? So what we're thinking about doing here is just pushing the brush back just a few yards from each side of the road and through the middle to uh, decrease the risk um, from wild turkeys uh, as they travel these corridors from roost sites to, to foraging sites. So Tanner, we were on this road a year ago and talking about how it was a travel corridor between a known roosting area and a winter food plot for wild turkey, but it was getting a little brushed in, real mm -hmm. tight for these winter flocks to move through. So what's the landowner done here? Yeah, so if you remember last year, I mean, this brush was right up against this right yeah. here. And the landowner's come in with his mulcher or his, his brush hog and had gone two or three strips right here to allow just that more of a buffer for protection for turkeys to travel through. And it looks like there's a lot of forbs that have come in. Yeah, there's a lot of flowers, a lot of broadleaf plants. So not only is this acting as a protective buffer, it's also going to act as a uh, broodering corridor as well. So a management practice that a lot of landowners think about with wild turkey is planting food plots or managing crop fields for turkeys. Um, and that's a useful practice. It certainly attracts turkeys at some times of the year. It can be uh, over relied on. I mean, that's certainly not what we want most of the property to, to be in is some agronomic crop. But that being said, having some strategic food plots can be useful, especially from a hunting scenario. So why don't you tell us about what, what we're standing in? Sure, so early this spring, this was planted as a uh, green wheat field and right behind us here over the hilltop we have some winter and uh, spring roosting trees and they will fly down in the mornings and actively eat uh, the green wheat itself and right now obviously the wheat's been harvested and plowed under but there's still tons of little grasshoppers here mm -hmm. that they will act they will still come down and mill around in these fields in the mornings especially picking up these little grasshoppers but the important thing is that as that food resource fades as we get in deeper into summer that we've also got this odd field corner beside us 
which uh, hasn't been sprayed. And yeah. so that's a, something to really think about is what our turkey is going to be using most of the summer, uh, especially as these crop fields are not as reliable of a food source. You need to look for flowering plants on your property and make sure to minimize the herbicide that you're using on the landscape because a lot of these flowering plants that are just full of grasshoppers, full of beetles, I mean that is the primary food for wild mm -hmm. turkeys during um, all summer when the broods are on the ground. So that's really important to retain that. So Tanner, uh, what have we got here? It looks like a resource concern that needs to be dealt with. Yeah, our main concern at this particular spot is we have these cottonwoods here that are like the roost trees and the loafing trees, but underneath them we have a growing infestation of eastern red cedars. And as the encroachment increases, they're gonna become unusable for wild turkeys because they're not going to want to roost in trees that they cannot see where they are going to land at. Yeah. And same with loafing, they're not gonna to wanna to loaf around in an area where they can't see at eye level. So it's really critically important to evaluate your property and look for these uh, cottonwood or, or large oak or elm, whatever they are, that are, are sources uh, for turkeys to roost, but also to loaf and to make sure that you keep the understory clear. Well, if you remember last year about this time behind us, these were, cottonwoods were all just engulfed in fairly tall cedar trees mm -hmm. and a uh, landowner has gone in with a mulcher and quickly cleared out from under all these trees. That's not, and immediately make these more available for turkeys to roost where they feel secure pitching off in the morning. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the other things to keep in mind is not only are these trees really important for roosting cover, but they're important for loafing cover. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's the middle of the day, it's hot, the turkeys are standing under the shade somewhere right now. Yep. Well, I think you've got something else to show me up the road, so let's head that way. Yep, that works. But one of the important uh, things to look at for strip disking over uh, using prescribed fire, uh, especially on some of these sandier sites like we are today, uh, is a, looking at the forb response, mm -hmm. uh, timing of the year. This was strip disked in uh, late November of last year. And uh, also uh, some erosion issues. Sometimes, like if we uh, so you burn up some sand hills or some sandier sites and we don't get the rains, uh, you have the potential for some, some erosion problems farther down the road uh, if you don't get the plant response back. Whereas the strip disking, uh, you still have some residual matter there as you turn up the soil. And we're not talking a deep tillage. Uh, we're just talking like a, a top one or two inches of disturbance there. and. Uh, I mean, this stand of sunflowers now is, you know, it's covering this whole area and it's really well, uh, really well, the canopy is, is a, almost a closed canopy, mm -hmm. but it's really wide open underneath. Right, it's so, perfect for a turkey because mm -hmm. they can look, uh, an adult hen can look over the top, uh, but yet the poults are hidden underneath. Mm -hmm. And it's just teeming with insects, uh, lots of grasshoppers in here and other uh, beetles and things that, that poults would want to eat. Um, and just to be clear, this wasn't planted. This mm -hmm. was in the seed bank. Yep. All they had to do was a disturbance. And you'd see similar responses from a fire. Mm -hmm. And then also important is think about the proximity of the food resources to cover. There's some trees uh, really close by that are nice and open underneath. It's a great place for a brood of turkeys to go hang out, cool off, and they can bounce back and forth between feeding areas and loafing areas all day. So that might be something to think about is strategically burning or strip disking in close proximity to areas that turkeys can loaf during the heat of the day. Really look forward to seeing how this property is going to transition over the next year or two as the landowner implements some of these practices and we'll be sure to you know check back in and allow you to see it and hopefully it'll be helpful yep. for you in managing your property. So let's go grab some lunch. Sounds good to me. Yeah, I think this, this landowner is gonna really like what he's gonna see in a couple of years with this turkey response. Yeah, if we can just get some favorable weather, I think mm -hmm. we'll really see the turkeys respond.